Tonight, top EU stories from the unit website include France proposes taxing data transferred out of the EU. Ireland, EU and IMF hammer out details of bank health checks. European Union unveils forests strategy. Bulgaria asks the EU for help with influx of Syrian refugees. Plus, Lithuania asks EU for early Euro adoption approval. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage, France has proposed the European Union study taxing companies for transferring personal data outside of the bloc, for example in call centres abroad. The proposal is part of a series France has made ahead of an EU summit next month that also includes a call to put in place new tax rules that would require non-European internet companies to pay taxes in Europe on profits earned there. Complex but legal tax structures have allowed companies like Amazon and Google to pay little profit tax in most European countries, although they generate hundreds of millions in profits in these markets. It's going to be interesting to see how the EU will make this stick, but let's assume for a moment that they do, then the end result will be an increase in prices for consumers, because the corporations have such global might that they dominate pricing in the market for their products and services. The Irish authorities, the EU and the IMF have completed two days of Dublin meetings aimed at agreeing a blueprint that will make the country's upcoming bank health checks as close as possible to a planned EU-wide version in 2014. Officials at the EU and IMF both confirmed that their representatives have been in Dublin this week for talks on the design of these tests. A spokesman for the European Central Bank, the third element of the so-called Troika, declined to comment. The design of the tests will be crucial for Ireland as the country seeks to exit its 2010 bailout in December, a prospect that could be jeopardised if its banks were found to need significant further support. So here goes, folks. As I predicted back in May, I believe that as this bank audit goes through, Ireland will be found to have significant unaccounted debt obligations and it will require further bailout monies or... Alternatively, some of its major financial institutions will simply go belly up. Watch this space. Protecting woodland and making the wood processing and paper industries more efficient are the main aims of a strategy on forests published today by European Commission. But campaign groups have criticised the plan for not setting hard targets. The strategy, spearheaded by the European Commissioner for Agriculture and Rural Development, takes forest management out of the forests, addressing the way that forests generate goods and services. <laughs> really? Only a Euro Bureau kleptocrat could get away with saying something so intolerably stupid. Take forest management out of the forest, this will end up being more of that environmental design, define and sterilise. These morons are mental. The forest is the forest. It's naturally, well, uh, a forest. They haven't changed in a thousand years. And there's just as much fun now as they were when Robin Hood was running around in them. Well, maybe not quite as much fun. But ultimately, this is more EU taking control over more aspects of our lives and regulating, litigating, directing everything. And let's face it, do you really think the squirrels give two hoots about what the directives say? Bulgaria needs EU aid as its capacity to take in more refugees from Syria's civil war is nearing breaking point, the EU's country's interior minister said on Thursday. We are working to minimise the risks not only for Bulgaria, but for the European Union also. He told AFP in an interview, referring to the risks of the refugees slipping into other EU countries. Yet Bulgaria's capacities are limited and we are nearing the point when we will no longer be able to manage these risks, he said. It's impossible to think about this story without a sense of sorrow for what is happening to the people of Syria. 
However, immigration in the EU has become a political hot potato, and the situation is not easing. As austerity bites, it's easy for resentment to build up amongst the public, and even easier for politics to exploit those feelings. Here in the UK, we really need a straight answer from Chairman Cameron on what he intends to do about the open door of immigration from Bulgaria and Romania in January 2014. It would be easy for the Bulgarian authorities to enable the plight of Syria to be adding extra strain. And this is a thorny issue, and it's not going away anytime soon. Lithuania is asking the European Union to speed up approval for its adoption of the euro in January 2015 to avoid complicating the process when the European Parliament breaks for elections next April. We've consulted EU commissioners on this and queried Eurostat and now we're awaiting their response. Vice Minister of Finance Adjumantus Rikmanis said by phone yesterday in Vilnius, the Lithuanian capital. Waiting for the new European Parliament to form would mean losing several months for work on practical preparations for introducing the euro. He also said, it's much more important to behave like we are behaving to create credibility for the markets and also the European institutions that will remain on track and the economic development will not be disturbed by irresponsible actions, he said in an interview in London. We will try to keep all economic indicators within the Maastricht limits. <laughs> Famous last words. Today in our video library, as the economies of the Eurozone and the US plunge into the fiscal abyss, what are the state of the coffers here in Old Blighty? The Money Week publication has begun tolling the bells of doom for the UK economy, with debt obligations of 900 billion and apparently no viable way to even fully cover the interest payments on the debt. The good ship Great Britain is destined according to Money Week to become the sunken submarine Broke Britain. This video takes a look at the economic metrics published by the UK Office of National Statistics that read like the final tarot for Britain's Treasury. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit, Nightly News. I'll see you soon. <laughs>